If you're not too young, you might remember when Netflix burst onto the scene and forever changed the way we consume movies. Well, gaming has its own version of Netflix from Microsoft called Game Pass, and honestly, it's amazing. Why talk about Game Pass? Is this an ad? Have I made it to the big times with sponsorship bucks? <laughs> no. But Microsoft, if you're listening, I am available. I want to talk about Game Pass because I think it's an amazing service that even just one more person needs to know about it. If you're an avid gamer, this is for you. If you are new and want to get into gaming, this is for you. For a monthly subscription, you can play as much as you want from the hundreds of games in the Game Pass library. Some games are there permanently, some drop out after a certain period of time, but new ones are constantly being added every month. With its huge selection, it really does have something for everyone. The main reason this service rocks socks is because of the bonkers value. I mean, have you seen the price of a AAA game these days. I can't shell out 90 colorful Canadian dollars for every one I think might be worth it because I'm not Bezos. For just under 20 loonies, or whatever real money you use, a month, you can gain access to tons of AAA and indie titles, many of which will be available the same day they release so you don't even have to wait for them, especially as Microsoft eats up more and more publishers. At that price, if you are playing just one AAA game every four months, you are coming out ahead. That's just being financially responsible. Aside from the value, which I, I can't stress enough, another huge win is the exposure it gives to games that may otherwise go undetected. Every month, I check what's coming out just to see what might catch my eye. Or every time I get an itch to try a new game, I go to Game Pass to see what my options are. Do you think I ever would have tried a game like Outriders if it wasn't on Game Pass? Hell no, but I did and I had an absolute blast with it. Same with Lies of P. You can dive into all kinds of different games at your own pace and enjoy them without any buyer's remorse or stress over that two hour ticking clock before you can't refund games on Steam. If you try something new and you don't like it, then there's no loss to you. You just drop it and move on. And if you do like it, then you can tell your friends all about it and get them into it, with multiplayer being another huge selling point. And I'm not just talking here about playing online, but playing with friends. Do you have a couple of friends coming over for a game night? Well, first off, lucky you, but maybe they hate the only local multiplayer game that you own. So just jump onto Game Pass and grab a quick party game like Overcooked or Jackbox. And if there is a multiplayer focused title you wanna try, like Outriders, then it becomes a lot easier to convince a friend to try it out with you if they also have Game Pass, instead of trying to make a case for them to drop a lot of money on a game they aren't even familiar with. Plus, since Game Pass is owned by Microsoft and every cool gamer has Windows, you can often choose whether you want to play on PC or Xbox without having to buy a copy for each. This is actually a surprising advantage that I didn't expect as some games do play better on one platform or the other, like Celesta, which really struggled at launch to play on PC but was perfectly fine on Xbox. On top of these bonuses for you, it also helps to know that there are benefits to developers as well. As mentioned earlier, at the very least, Game Pass provides a huge level of promotion and visibility to games that may otherwise not get it. In addition, developers make some guaranteed income by signing their games onto Game Pass for a certain amount of time. Guaranteed income is always a plus, especially for indies. And it doesn't seem as though this precludes them from selling on any other platforms like Steam. And if you like a game so much that you just want to own it outright, you can get a discount on purchases. So there's even more savings for you and return for the developers. By having so many titles available at any given moment, it's also easier to cut down on those big day one AAA impulse purchases, knowing that there's a pile of games waiting for you already that you can peruse at your own pace. I also frequently find that by the time I'm done with a couple games on Game Pass, ones I've been wanting to try since they've launched will soon be joining the catalog, so I feel like I've been rewarded for waiting. And now, if there happens to be a lull, I'm way more tempted to pick up a cheap indie to fill the time. This is all a very long way of saying, get Game Pass. 
I'm so surprised that something like this even exists and it should be taken advantage of for as long as we have it. It does make money as a service, so I'm not worried that it's gonna go anywhere, but I wouldn't be surprised if down the line it just got shut down because stuff like that tends to happen in the industry. At the very least, maybe the number of titles will begin to shrink as Microsoft takes on fewer and fewer risky options or competitive services begin to pop up somehow. But for now, it is something I am glad that we have and will continue to use as much as I can. And since it's been like a week since I've tried anything new, I've got to go figure out what I'm going to play next. Thanks for listening, and thanks for letting me talk gaming.